Welcome creatures. Who am I? I'm Aizen. What am I here for? I'm here to save you some time. Why? Because as we go deeper in the development of Dragonflight, we have more and more changes to the specs and the classes. They keep getting turned upside down with significant changes left and right, and you can't really keep track of them properly. You know, just today. Just today, this is the list of changes to all of the classes and specs. But wait, there is more, because there is also all of this, right? And it gets kind of... Um, kind of tricky to keep track of this entire wall of text every single time there is this whole wave of changes especially when many of these when you try to read what's up when you try to read what's happening is basically just a whole bunch of tooltip changes a whole bunch of tooltip adjustments for the different uh, classes and specs and doesn't really get many changes so i'm here to save you the time to actually check this for yourself and get some some best of Right? Some highlight reel of all of the changes happening to the specs and classes for today is for this new beta build of Dragonflight. And there are actually some massive changes to some of the specs. Today we have on the menu changes to Discipline Priest, to Shadow Priest, to Fury Warrior, but also Arms Warrior a little bit. We also have Holy Priest, we have Protection Paladin and both of the Demon Hunter specs as well. So there is a whole, a whole list of changes happening for today, which means we don't have a lot of time. And let's start immediately in the reverse alphabetical order, starting with Warrior, because Warrior has gotten quite a few changes here and there. However, there is one that is quite interesting to see what is going to impact, which is wrenching impact. This is one of your choices to upgrade your Heroic Leap. One choice is the classic, you know, reduced cooldown option for Heroic Leap. This choice, however, makes your Heroic Leap's cooldown doubled, so one and a half minute cooldown for your Heroic Leap, but in return, it's going to pull four random enemies within 10 yards of you. So it's a mini mass grip of a Death Knight. The mass grip of a Death Knight is 15 yards long, 15 yards large whereas this one is just 10 yards but it can still work you know it can still work for example to interrupt enemies to stop them from casting even if they are uninterruptible by simply gripping them to you so it does give more utility to warrior to what they already have available to them now warriors do have quite a few changes as mentioned we also covered quite a few of them before this this new version of the beta one of the new things I think is worth mentioning is the two storm talents, the storm of steel and the storm of swords. One storm of swords is in your left side of the tree for your fury warrior build. I found it interesting because it improved something that I already thought was quite interesting with how it worked. Whirlwind and Slam have a 6 second cooldown but now they deal double damage and even make your Slam generate rage. I thought as I said the last time we looked at this it was interesting to try out these weird new things like giving your abilities bigger cooldowns or bigger costs at the return for your investment of some big buff, some big damage or something like that. Now this talent gets even harder because while Whirlwind still has a 6 second cooldown and still deals 100% more damage, Slam has a 12 second cooldown instead of 6 and does 200% more damage instead of 100 and gives you 20 rage instead of 5 rage. I think this is an interesting change. It's not that Slam was already a major part of your rotation. Very often Slam gets forgotten by warriors it's mostly like an endurance a very disappointing and boring ability to fit into your into your rotation or to simply not use into your rotation at all this talent might make it a little bit more interesting you know give it a longer cooldown make it hit much harder even use it to make you gain some rage it can now slot much more easily in your rotation because now it is legitimately useful for you as a warrior. Talking about the other Storm talent, this is Storm of Steel, which is in the opposite direction of Storm of Swords. This was one of your options to improve your Ravager. One option was to make your Ravager, well, do more damage, give you stacking uh, strength and movement speed as you were ravaging or blade storming. Now, this other option was very boring by comparison. Ravager's duration increased by two seconds. I mean, okay but really the change talent is quite more interesting ravager's damage is reduced by 50 percent but now it has two charges so it's twice as long 
for half the damage. It can be more useful, right? It can be spread, for example, in Mythic Plus for multiple big Mythic Plus pulls back to back. Now you have Ravager. Yes, it's gonna be doing 50% less damage, but now at least you have it twice instead of once. Those I think were the two standout changes for Warriors, primarily for Fury, that happened after the, the changes we already talked about for Warrior a few days ago. And then we have some more changes to Priest. Now, I was a little bit uh, mean to Priest the last time we looked at this because both Discipline and Holy were quite nerfed. Last time we looked at the changes and even Shadow Priest, it's not that the set of changes was positive overall. There were quite a few nerfs. A few buffs at the very least, but generally speaking, still not that positive. Now, we have something a little bit more interesting for Shadow Priest. What do we have? Well, Shadow Priest gets a brand new talent, a brand new mechanic, it's basically almost going to replace your, your mastery, or at the very least, double your mastery, give you, give you an, extra, an extra thing that you can play around with your rotation, which is the new talent, Coalescing Shadows. To prove, to show how important this is, you can see how early in the talent tree this is. You know, this is not some last of the rows talent, okay? This is not one of the options that you will have to make at the end. This is very, very early and very, very simple and easy to take. So it's going to be very likely taken by many of the Shadow Priest players. Mind Seer and Shadow War Pain damage has a 4% chance to grant you Coalescing Shadows and Mind Flay has a 15% chance to grant you Coalescing Shadows. This buff stacks up to three times, Mind Blast or Mind Spike, consume all of the Coalescing Shadows to deal 20% increased damage per stack. And consuming at least one of these Coalescing Shadows increases the damage of your periodic effects by 10%. So it's a new mechanic, right? Not only empower your big hit, your Mind Blast by 60%, but also to give you a, a way to keep track of your 10% dot buff. So you want to consume one of these Coalescing Shadows at least once every 15 seconds to keep this buff active. This talent has also been followed by a couple of supporting talents right down the exact same line over here. One is Puppet Master, which finally now has a proper tooltip. We actually know what this is. Your Shadow Fiend and Mindbender now grant you Coalescing Shadows each time they deal damage. Makes sense, right? Shadow Fiend and Mindbender is supposed to be for your big cooldowns. It makes sense that inside your big cooldown you generate more of these, uh, of these Coalescing Shadows. Also, damage from your Shadowy Apparitions has an 8% chance to grant you Coalescing Shadows. The second talent following up Puppet Master is Harnessed Shadows. This is going to give you an even higher chance to proc these Coalescing Shadows with Mind Seer and Shadow War Pain, 2% more, so 6% chance, and then 10% more for Mind Flay, so 25% chance total. Plus the extra, you know, PvP effect of having a 100% chance of gaining one stack when you get critically hit by an attack. I thought that was quite interesting, it is a quite interesting set of mechanics that add a little bit more complexity to the rotation of the Shadow Priest, although perhaps it's not that Shadow Priest needed to be more complex, right? It's not one of the specs that usually comes to your mind for being very simple and straightforward to play. Talking about simple and straightforward, we had for a long time this talent which wasn't simple and straightforward whatsoever. It was the idol of Yesharij, which was completely nebulous in what it did. It said that your Shadow Fiend caused you to gain a benefit based on your target's emotional state. Yeah, right, it makes up for good memes, but what does this mean exactly? Now we actually know what does this mean. If you pull out your Shadow Fiend when your enemy is healthy, you gain 5% more damage. If you pull it out when the enemy is enraged, you dispel the enemy and you gain 5% haste. If you pull it out when the enemy is stunned, you gain 5 insanity generation every second for the duration of the Shadow Fiend. And if you pull it out when the enemy is feared, you and your Shadow Fiend deal 15% increased damage and do not break fear effects. This can be, besides the obvious PvP usefulness, it can be quite useful in Mythic Plus as well, because in Mythic Plus there are plenty of mobs that can be feared, so you can use your fear and then pull out your Shadow Fiend on a feared mob and gain this 15% damage buff, which is going to be a quite decent damage increase for Shadow Priest in Mythic Plus. So all of these changes are quite cool, honestly. For Shadow Priest, of course, they are not buffs. 
or they're not nerfs. They are just entire talent overhauls, as it is the history of Shadow Priest getting basically reworked every expansion. Uh, this seems like quite interesting at the very least. We have, however, as is tradition, we have to stop with a nerf because manipulation, which was your talent addition for your mind games gets nerfed. Now you no longer get a one second cast time reduction of mind games with your abilities, but now you get a half a second cast time reduction on your abilities when you use mind games. Now, while Shadow Priest changes still look quite interesting, we have to go back to Holy Priest and we also have to go back to nerfs. Because, because for Holy Priest, we do have a couple of nerfs. One is the first one, Prismatic Echoes, is perhaps the one much more important because it's right here. Prismatic Echoes is right before the last bracket, the last row of your talents. So the most important talents, the most powerful talents, if you want to go down the middle, you have to put two points in Prismatic Echoes. It's a problem because previously increases the healing done of your mastery by 15% and the second rank 30%. Now it's 6 and 12. So it's gonna go from 30% more mastery healing to 12% more mastery healing. It's understandable because Holy Priest already has something like 30% of your total healing coming from your mastery. So there wasn't really much of a need to make the mastery stronger. It's quite annoying though that it's right in the middle of your talent tree so you can't really avoid this if you want to go down the middle road for Holy Priest. Talking about nerfs, there is another nerf. This time it's for Healing Chorus. This is the follow-up talent, the extra talent for your uh, Circle of Healing. It's now been made twice as long to stack up. Before, every healing from your Renew increased the healing of your Circle of Healing by 2%, stacking up 25 times for a total of 50%. Now it only stacks up by 1% up to 50 times. So the amount of the extra healing is the same, 50%, but now it takes twice as long to actually reach the, the cap of the buff. We couldn't, of course, we couldn't leave Discipline alone because we have pestered uh, Discipline as well. The last time we checked for Priest, it got nerfed quite a bit. Now there is a massive buff. At the very least, something happy for Discipline, a massive buff to Shadow Covenant. The last part of Shadow Covenant made your holy spells deal 50% decreased damage and healing. The bonus, of course, was that now your shadow spells deal 25% increased damage and healing. Now the change is that the damage reduction to your holy spells is completely gone, and in return you gain Shadow Mend no longer having a cooldown, in case you forgot, in Dragonflight Shadow Mend will have a cooldown, and Halo and Divine Star are converted to shadow spells after you use Shadow Covenant. This makes Shadow Covenant much uh, stronger to use, definitely now a more viable spell compared to what it has been up to this point for Discipline. However, there is something much more interesting and much more important which will have to likely shape the future talent setup of a Discipline, which is this thing right here. Spirit Shell has been removed. Gone. Disappearing completely. This was a bane to balance as we have seen since the days of Mists of Pandaria. It continued to exist for multiple expansions. It was removed for a while. It made its comeback in Shadowlands and it looks like that's how far this spell goes now because apparently Blizzard settled for removing Spirit Shell. We haven't gotten much of any changes. Certainly removing Spirit Shell will demand some more adjustments for the Discipline 3, right? But for now, this is the main take we have gotten, the fact that Spirit Shell is no longer in the plans of the Discipline Priest players. To be fair, the majority of Priest players have gotten a positive response to, to getting rid of Spirit Shell, and so am I, by the way, so I too applaud this choice from the Blizzard developers. We then have away from uh, healers, we have buffs. Of course, as we move away from healers, immediately we can start seeing some buffs. Starting with Demon Hunter, there is a significant massive buff to the damage, primarily, of Vengeance Demon Hunter. Previously, Soul Furnace was only going to give you damage increase to your next Soul Cleave by 40%. Now, it's not just Soul Cleave, it's also Spirit Bomb by 40%, which is quite 
powerful of a change. Interestingly enough, the talent is lower in the three than Spirit Bomb, so technically you can gain a buff to your Spirit Bomb damage without even having Spirit Bomb as a talent, but still very good addition to your damage for a Vengeance Demon Hunter. There is also what is pretty sure it's a nerf overall to Fiery Demise, which was another talent for Vengeance for the damage increase of your Fiery Brand. Before, it increased the damage by 25% at rank 1 and then 50%, now it's 15% and 30%. So you go and lose a whole bunch of damage with uh, Fiery Demise in terms of fire damage with your Fiery Brand. There are also changes to Havoc, not just Vengeance. One is Know Your Enemy. Know Your Enemy now makes you gain critical strike damage equal to 50 and then at rank 2, 100% of your critical strike chance. So you are a demon hunter with 30% more crit chance. It means that your crits no longer do 200% more damage, but they do 230% more damage if you take this talent. Very good. As we talked about before, this is a very good late game, a very good scaling talent because it gives more value to your crit. Just like we talked about this talent right here, any means necessary giving you more scaling because it turns abilities that did not scale with your mastery which increases chaos damage it turned them to do chaos damage so plenty of abilities that you currently use as a demon hunter that don't do chaos damage like elysian decree the hunt immolation aura fiery brand all that stuff would turn into chaos and therefore scale with your mastery now with this uh, extra crit chance turned into crit damage you have another tool to be more powerful deeper down in the expansion however however not deeper down in the expansion but at the release of the expansion you are getting nerfed in the damage of your immolation aura if you're taking growing inferno before it was 15 percent damage at rank one with your talent now it's eight percent at rank one from 15 to 30 to 8 to 15 so it's basically a 50 percent damage nerf to your immolation aura for this talent and then there is also the nerf to burning wound Previously, you were spreading this dot with Demon's Bite, and then the damage increase of your Immolation Aura was 65%. Now, the damage increase of Immolation Aura is only 45%. Now, you can also spread it to only three targets, and now it doesn't spread with Demon's Bite, so your normal, basically, auto-attack, but it spreads with Throglaive. And the dot itself, the dot over 15 seconds, is also nerfed because it goes from 100% of your AP to 75% of your AP. So overall, overall, it's a complete nerf to the talent of Burning Wound, to your current legendary from Shadowlands, uh, Burning Wound. What we finish, what we finish with for today is Paladin. Protection Paladin is in the limelight for today. It's getting quite a significant buff to Moment of Glory, right at the bottom of the tree of Protection Paladin, right here in the bottom left. This was Moment of Glory. It was not only a weak talent, it was also even weaker because the middle and the right side of Prot Paladin were super strong. As you can see here from the icons, you had, you had Divine Toll, in the right, uh, you had Bulwark of Righteous Fury in the middle, so this talent was not really competing with those two other options. Now the change is significant. Instead of making your Avenger shield damage increase by 20% and generating an Absorb shield for an additional 50% of the damage dealt, now you generate an Absorb shield for 20% of the damage you do. Not just 50% of the damage you do with Avenger shield, 20% of all of your damage gets turned into a shield. Also, the cooldown of Avenger's shield isn't reduced by 50%, but it's reduced by 75%, which brings it at a 4.5 second cooldown. This makes it much smoother for you to use this cooldown to have 20% of your damage every second converted into an HP shield. It makes you much more tanky when previously this cooldown wasn't really giving you as nearly as much tankiness so this is much better for moment of glory the only sadness the only sadness for reaching this talent down that left side is that you still have to spend two talent points in this piece of shit that's what is likely still going to make you not go down this road because you really don't care about doing more damage to the primary target of Avengers Shield unless you are in a raid and fighting only one enemy. So that's perhaps the only thing that um, ought to be changed for Prot Paladin. 
Talking about more buffs, Gift of the Golden Valkyrie, which is also one of the later stage talents for Prot Paladin, gets buffed. The default talent is the same. Each enemy hit by Avengers Shield reduces the cooldown of your Guardian of Ancient Kings by one second if you put two points in it. Now it has an extra. When you drop below 20% HP, you become infused with Guardian of Ancient Kings for four seconds. This cannot occur again for 45 seconds. It's a decent extra. You know, it costs nothing, it's just free, so why not? Lastly, to finish, there is the constant attempt of Blizzard to make the left side of Paladin viable. The left side of Paladin, the general tree of Paladin is shit compared to the middle and the right side. So it's the same problem of the Prot Paladin tree. Because the middle of the Paladin tree has Seraphim or Sanctified Wrath as an option and the right side has Mad Paragon. So it does have some very powerful talents or legendaries already existing in the game, which are quite good, and the left side is just too weak. So Blizzard is trying to buff the left side. First, they buff of Dusk and Dawn, the already existing legendary right now in Shadowlands, never used. Now the duration of the buff, of the cyclical buff, is increased from 12 seconds to 15 seconds, so it's gonna be easier to keep this up, to keep both of these up. At the same time and then the talent after that seal of order gets empowered previously when you were cycling around these two bonuses of of dusk and dawn you were getting 10 percent more armor and 10 percent more healing from flash of light but the thing is flash of light is useless red paladins barely use it prot paladins use uh, word of glory and holy paladins they must be playing the caster build to even use flash of light so now that part gets removed now it's no longer about giving you 10% more healing with Flash of Light, now it's about reducing the cooldown of Holy Power generating abilities by 10%. So Judgment, Crusader Strike, Blade of Justice, depending on which uh, spec you're playing, get a 10% faster cooldown reduction, which is definitely much better than getting 10% more healing with your Flash of Light. So these are all of the main standout changes that we can slot in for today. I figured that given the, the, the size of the change of Balanced Druid, changing basically how they play, they would deserve a video on their own, together with a handful of other changes that uh, don't make it in here, mostly because otherwise the video would get even longer. And as I said, this is supposed to be a recap. I'm not supposed to keep you here for like 40 minutes to look at all of these changes. So we're going to delay them to tomorrow or in a couple of days if we get to see even more changes coming in in the beta. But for now, we can stop to these handful of specs and their, their changes so far. As I said before multiple times, trying to make a few of you a little bit more uh, at rest with these changes. We don't know the numbers at the end of the day. We don't know how specs are performing. We don't know how powerful any of this is. So as cool as it is, as interesting as it is to look at all of these changes, look at all of these buffs or nerfs of the specs, we actually don't know how powerful they are at, at the moment. We might be seeing six rounds of nerfs in a row for Holy Priest. And it looks like it's a disaster. It looks like Priest must be abandoned. But maybe Blizzard knows. Blizzard has tested Holy Priest and realizes it's completely broken in Dragonflight and needs to be toned down multiple times, which is something we don't know. All we are gonna see is a continuous list of nerfs to Holy Priest. But until we can start gauging how powerful the specs are on their own, we really don't know. While, as I said, it's quite interesting to look at the changes from the outside perspective, don't put too much weight. On, on what does it mean if a spec gets nerfed or if a spec gets buffed at this very moment, at the very least. So, with this disclaimer, we can leave each other to the rest of our Thursday. Thank you, of course, as usual, to all of my patrons for supporting me. You are helping, you are a good part on what uh, allows me to continue to produce uh, content for WoW as we go deeper and deeper in the beta of Dragonflight, of which, as usual, I am still the CEO chairman and manager of the no beta political party also you can like and comment down below as well as subscribing to the channel itself that is always generally speaking the end goal of a youtube channel you can follow me on twitter as well right down at this link together with subscribing to my patreon as well with all of this out of the way thank you guys for watching see you guys soon which means likely tomorrow and in the meantime 
Why? It was supposed to stop being hot like three days ago. Why? Why am I still getting sweaty around my neck when my hair rests on it? This is not supposed to happen in September.